Welcome to Mixing Cultures Podcast. I'm Sally, one of the hosts. I'm Sophia, the best host. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, I like put that in there. I was like... <laughs> and today we're continuing part two of Sophia's and Harley's story up to, you know, how they got married. So where did we end up on last time? Now we're doing long distance because he's in Indonesia and I'm in Korea. Yeah, so that's where we left off is when you started the long distance, you would say. So Harley's very nice, very sweet Mm -hmm. little boy. When we, because Indonesia is two hours slower than Korea. Yeah. So when I would wake up and I'd do my stuff, blah, 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 the moment he woke up, he would Skype me. Until, Damn. until I had to go somewhere or, like, he had to go somewhere. And then so I'd go through my day. Because, you know, in Korea, how our life is very routine. Yeah, so yeah. in the morning, like, we go do our thing. And then so in the middle, when I come back home, if he's at home, he'll text. He'll text. He'll call me again. Oh. And then um, until his parents come home and he needs to, like, help open the gate and park the car and stuff like that. Then he'll go. Yeah. He'll at dinner, do his thing. And that's when we go to the gym, like, all all together, right? Yeah, yeah. And then when I come back, he would Skype me again till I went to sleep. That's a long time. Yeah, so that'd be, like, another three hours after we came back home. Yeah. And then, so, yeah. that that was almost our whole long-distance period before I got my job. And I went to Bali to start working. Yeah, at least communication was very consistent, though. Because that's the difficult part of long. And that also helps that you didn't have a big time difference. No, and also he's very, he's very nice. Um, He decided that he thought that we needed to always, like, talk and be together. So he's Mm -hmm. the one who always constantly texting and doing stuff like Mm -hmm. that. There was, we had one argument during the long distance. So I still have one thing that I get to keep. Yes. I have like a little, I have a little something up my sleeve because of what happened while we were dating. (laughs) So so the Indonesians were all gathering. They all went back to Swiss. They're all gathering. They want to have a meetup. Yeah. And then he said like, oh, I'm going to have a meetup. So I said, Okay. okay, cool. But like, don't come home like too late. Yeah, yeah. And then he's like, no, 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 no. I'm not going to come home too late. I'm like, at least come back like before 2 a.m. You know? Yeah. Like, very generous Mother Teresa Sophia here. 2 a.m., you know? <laughs> okay, okay. And because we're two hours different, right? So when I wake up, there's a text on my phone that said, hey, baby, I'm home. I'm going to go to sleep now. But it is in 6.30 in the morning my time. Which means it's 4.30 when he got home. So I'm looking at this text and I'm like brooding. Like, okay, am I going to have like World War Three? Like, what are like what am I going to do? Because I'm, I'm thinking like he already said okay to coming home at 2 o'clock. He was totally fine. Yeah. And it's not like I gave him like a crazy, crazy curfew. It's, it's a reasonable curfew in my opinion. So, okay, yeah. that's fine. And then, but then I, go, I wake up. I'm not stupid. I can calculate time difference. Minus two. Yeah. So, and I'm looking at this. I'm like, hmm, something ain't correct here. Right? So. Yeah. I'm like thinking about it while he's sleeping. Like, okay, what am I going to do? Am I just going to let this go? Make it no big deal? Or am I going to bring it up and be like, excuse you, what what have you done? Yeah. So I decided to go somewhere in the middle. Like, I will bring it up casually <laughs> and see how he reacts. Wow. Okay. Because I need to I need to see his reaction to think how I'm going to yeah. react to this, right? Yeah. So when he wakes up like normal, he calls me. So I'm like, so I was, you know, that voice that makes all boys scared. So I was looking at the text you sent me and I noticed the time is what I said. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, so you texted me my time 6.30 that you got home, which means it's about 4.30 your time. I was like, would yeah. you care to explain? <laughs> and then he was like, 
oh, you know, like, I was going to leave around 12 my time. But then everyone was like, no, if you leave, then everyone's going to leave. So you got to stay and blah, blah. And then he was like, yeah, I didn't want to be like that person who like broke up the party. Uh, and I was like, yeah, so I did not <laughs> accept his response as a valid response. Yeah. So I was like, okay, so that sounds fair. But now I have a card. If I ever need to go out and I come home late, we, I, will, say anything. I will use this card. And then he's like, no, yeah. you can't. It's like the why can you and why can't and I? And then I said, why not? And then, you know, the cliche answer comes out because you're a girl. And I'm like, excuse me? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, no, no. He's like, it's dangerous. He kind of messed up. Yeah. He screwed himself over it. He's like, part. it's dangerous for a girl. And I was like, mm, like, uh, I don't think you can use that excuse in like 20 something, you know, like it just, you can't yeah. do that. Like I told him, anywho, I have a card. It's mine. I get to use it whenever I want. End of story. Yeah. But I won't slam on you. I'll just I'll just let it go as a happening. So yeah. I still have that little card because I've never been out late in my life until now. <laughs> so I still have it. Still After three years of marriage, <laughs> I still have that card. It's with me. It's going to be like that kind of like, it's like Pokemon Go where where he brings out a Pokemon and I suddenly bring out like a legendary Pokemon and be like, ooh, card. Like that. It's like the Rowlet versus Groudon. Yeah. <laughs> so, <clears throat> and then I got a job in Bali. Yeah. Because we were looking at our options of how we could meet again. And we decided mm-hmm. that probably us meeting in Indonesia was going to be much faster than him trying to find a job in the U.S. or somewhere overseas. Yeah. Because visa-wise, um, Indonesia is very accepting of expatriates, so it's easier for me to get a job there. Because I found mm-hmm. a job first. Yeah. And then we've already been apart quite a while at this point, maybe two, three months. Yeah. So I went to visit him in Indonesia and, like, meet his parents and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And may I just say, his parents loved me <laughs> the moment they saw me, so that's all good. That's always good. It's it's the saddest thing to hear when their parents don't like you. And also, I love his parents. I've met them and they're very nice people. Yeah. I love, 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 love his parents. If I love yeah. Harley and I married Harley, probably 60% is because I love him, but 40% is because I love his parents. <laughs> and I have said that to You better him hope already. he doesn't hear this. <laughs> oh, never mind. <laughs> when I, before I married him, I told him, I'm marrying you because 60% I love you, but it's 40% because I love your mom and dad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've met them. They're very nice. Yeah. So that's what I told them. He already, he already knows about this. And then they really like me too, I think. But then yeah. Harley said... The moment I came to Indonesia to see him, that's when he thought, like, okay, I need to marry this girl. Oh, that was what it was. Yeah. That was kind of like... Because you're making that effort to come see him and also meet his family and everything. Yeah. So that was, like, the turning point. Because, so apparently, I am the more favorite of his girlfriends. I am the most favorite of the girlfriends from his parents. Well, that's always good. Yeah. I mean, hello. I love his mom and dad. They love me. They yeah. Get all right. Like, even. Yeah, it, it works out. Hmm. And because you don't know this, but I had a problem with my visa to go to Bali. I had a mm-hmm. problem in Korea because the visa came out wrong. I had to go to Singapore to get my visa. And then from Singapore, I had to fly to Bali. Okay. And then, and then Harley's parents were like, okay, well. You can't let her go to Singapore by herself. You need to go with her. Oh, damn. So when I was flying to Singapore, he flew to Singapore first and met me in Singapore. Okay. And then the next day, like, he helped me go to... Because I've never been to Singapore before. So he, like, took me around to, like, the visa place to find it, to, like, submit my passport to help me get my visa and things like that. Yeah, yeah. And then that evening, I can't remember who flew to Bali. I think I flew to Bali and he flew back home. Because someone was picking okay. me up from the hotel. But, oh, okay, he, okay. but he flew and his parents said that he should fly all the way to Singapore just to help me with on that one day trip, you know? Mm, yeah. And then I go to Bali first. I'm working. I'm working. I'm not so lonely because Ariel, the, the guy who came to our wedding, he was there. Yeah. And he knew me. So he took me around and stuff like that. Because I think Harley told That's him good, as yeah. well to like... 
take care of take me. care of you yeah yeah because if you're really alone in the country like you're not familiar with it's stressful and then harley came like a few months after after he found a job yeah so i've been there for about a year and i'm thinking like oh my god like i don't think i can stay here anymore like what am I gonna do? So we so we were yeah. talking like we never we always wanted to go abroad and live abroad and start a family and things like that. Yeah, yeah. We were looking at options like where we could go, and we found about this post studying program in New Zealand. Mm-hmm. And we've already been dating for almost a year, right? And yeah. Then we weren't going to get married like until we've been dating like at least three four years. Yeah. But then. This is also mom's fault, by the way, because when we used to talk on the phone, <laughs> mom would be like, why don't you just get married? I'd be like, excuse you? Like, you're the one you used to always tell us, like, don't get married, enjoy life. Yeah, don't get married know? too fast. Yeah, and then and then suddenly she was telling, like, this 23-year-old girl, you, you should just get married. Yeah. Sorry, that kind of triggered something in me, and then mm-hmm. I was talking to Harley. I was like, well, that's what my mom said, and then... He was like, well, like, if you have, if you want to go there to study, like, I'm going to come with you, you know? Yeah. So, and then I think he told his parents, like, I think we're going to get married soon. And then I think his parents were like, what? (laughs) And then, like, and then, and then, because every, like, at least once or, like, once every two months, we would fly back to Jakarta to see his family. Yeah. Because, like, I missed him. I miss them, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then also, like, even when I was living by myself in Bali before we came, they would send, like, huge boxes of, like, care package, like, so I wouldn't have to buy anything on my own. Even, like, shampoo, conditioner, toothbrush, 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 toothbrush. <laughs> they would send everything over, so they I They sent the essential package. Yeah. They sent an essential package, like, all the time. Like, once a month, once every two uh, months, they would send, you know? They probably just didn't want you to worry about that Because they were worried stuff. about me. And before Harley yeah. found a job... Or, like, after he found a job and he was looking for a place to live, they all came and, like, came to see me as well. Like, Mm -hmm. you know? So he kind of told them, like, this is what we're thinking. Like, we want to. We want to get married and we want to, like, go together to New Zealand like that. So Harley's dad said, like, if Sophia is going to go study to do the postgraduate, because after you do postgraduate, you get, like, a working visa, like, three-year working visa. Yeah. Right? He's like, if Sophia's going to go study, I don't mind paying for the school. But if Harley yeah. is going to go study, I'm not so sure that I want to pay for Because <laughs> he's not confident that Harley's going to stick with it. Yeah, because he wasn't quite sure that Harley would kind of make it through the whole thing. Yeah, I can see that. His dad's just being honest. Yeah, so like, and by the way, we were just dating when we were talking about that at that point. So yeah, even yeah. his dad was already offering to pay for my studying yeah yeah so like that kind of made us laugh too because we i thought it was kind of funny like he would co- trust a complete strange like just the girlfriend of yeah. you to pay for schooling rather than you going to school yourself so that's yeah, yeah. why we decided we get married and then the the end of the year we would move to New Zealand to do the postgraduate. We decided that we were going to get married. That in June we decided we were going to get married. Oh, okay, yeah. And yeah, then yeah. when I called mom, she's like, "Okay, but these are the dates okay for you to get married." And I was like, "Why?" And she's like, "That's the only day Sally can come, okay?" And I was like, "Yeah, because so to put into perspective, they were thinking about sometime in August and I had to fly back like on August 20th or something to go back to school." So the only time, like, no, we were, we were thinking also... about September, and then mom said September you can't. I'm not there, yeah. and she's like Sally and has we... to be there, so it has to be in August. So she gave <laughs> it me kind of like... would suck if I couldn't be there. And then she gave me like two dates, and like you can choose from those two dates. I'm like, oh my god, it's my wedding, but I can't even choose the date that I want. <laughs> I have to choose. Yeah, because everyone had to fly to Bali, right? Yeah. So like I talked it over with Harley's parents, and then like. We chose the one date that was okay. And then, Mm -hmm. so the order is a complete mess. Because after, mom was like, but we should meet him before you guys get married. So why don't you guys come to Korea? Yeah, I think we realized that after you booked the wedding date. We're like, wait, but we don't want, we want to see him before you actually get married. Like, isn't that 
yeah. kind of common decency. <laughs> we were like, your mom was like, we should know who he is before he got married. My mom, exactly. My mom just totally agreed to me getting married to a complete stranger that she has stranger. never met. <laughs> so two weeks before the wedding, me and Harley flew to Korea. He just stayed like the first week and he went back. And then I stayed the last yeah. week with mom and we all flew to Bali together. Because yeah, the so whole be- family. Yeah, before we went to Korea, it was crazy because we were looking at the venue. We had to look at places for you guys to sleep, and then yeah. So apparently, I didn't know that because he told me after. So after he left Korea, like he went to Bali earlier with his family, like two three days before, and they were yeah. arranging transportation and everything. Yeah. So <clears throat> we landed kind of in the evening, like two days before the uh, yeah, wedding night. Yeah. <clears throat> And it was crazy because I was still getting my wedding dress altered and refitted, refitted, refitted. Mm-hmm. Because every time I, I would go to get refitted in my wedding dress, I lost weight. So they had to change the wedding dress again. It didn't again. fit. So yeah. I was altering my wedding dress till the day before my wedding I know because I, yeah, I remember you had to do that. So we were doing like other stuff. Yeah. So I had already planned out what you were going to do throughout the day. So mm-hmm. when we first landed... That's when you all met, like, Harley's parents, Harley's brother, and Harley's sister-in-law. And then... When Harley's dad wrote the eight-page letter speech. Yeah, so when we went to have dinner, um, <laughs> he wrote, like, a speech explaining everyone, like, what he did, like, what are what the family's like, and what they expect from, like, this, like that. And then... Yeah. Mom was shocked, because she did not have an essay to... She did not prepare one. No, and the thing is, um, he read it. In Indonesian, and then Harley's brother was live translating it. So beside. what happened was he had wrote it like prior, like a week before. He yeah, sent it to oh the brother, God. so the brother could translate it. So when he read it, like he could translate it. And then after he was translating the English, we had to translate it into Korean. <laughs> so it was just like a big yeah, old mess. It was a long paper. speech, <laughs> but you, but it was because from the bottom of his heart. He felt like yeah, he needed to I, save I himself. really saw that he was, like, really preparing. And he wanted the words to come out correctly. I think that was the main motivation. And also, he um, didn't want to think, like, they were super, super crazy rich. He was like, I just work. Like, I work full-time. My wife works full-time. Yeah, they're just being humble. Mm. And and to be fair, like, they're wonderful people. I love them so much as well. <clears throat> and yeah. then after we finished that dinner, they were tired because it was already past when they normally sleep. Yeah. But then you and my cousin Jasmine, you guys wanted to mm-hmm. go see a bar. Yeah, because yeah. you said, I think, one of your friends or... Their family owns that hotel, I think. Yeah, yeah. So we went we went to that bar. Harley's brother and sister-in-law didn't come because they were tired as well. And that's where you yeah. met my friend Ronnie at that bar. Yeah. Because she had drove... To be fair, she works like 40 minutes away by driving and she came straight after work to see us. She drove all the she was late but she was like I wanted to like come and meet everyone first. So she drove yeah, all like out of her way there. Cuz also I haven't met her for quite a while after I had left. So she's like yeah. she's like on me like I'm gonna come. Like I'm coming. Yeah. And that's when she, cuz she's the same age as you as well. Yeah, yeah. So and then you guys all met each other the next day in the morning like cuz you guys had the breakfast at the hotel. And then after breakfast, I brought you guys to the massage place to get a massage. That traumatized me. And then after I dropped you guys off, I went to go get fitted for my wedding dress again. Yeah, yeah. And then we came back to pick you guys up and brought you guys back to the hotel. And then in the afternoon, I had to go and get my wedding dress again. Because when I had left there, I they had to kind of make it smaller again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they altered it until like 3 p.m. in the afternoon the day before my wedding, and then I brought it back. Yeah. And then you can talk about this part now, because now we checked out of the first hotel, and we're going to the hotel where I'm getting married at. So we stayed at uh, a hotel like before, and after the move, so this was like the day before the wedding, because the hotel is, is where the wedding was happening. So we were going to the venue like the day before, It was the nicest villa, like, I have ever seen. So everyone, so it was, like, my mom and I, my cousins, my aunts and my uncles, and everyone, my grandma. We were all staying in one uh, villa, but they had, you know, separate little rooms. It's called a three-bedroom pool villa. 
Yeah, so there's three bedrooms. So I think like each family kind of had one room. You got the and nicest the pool, one because I gave you the master room for you. Yeah, so our the 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 room that mom and I were staying in could see the ocean view, right? Yeah. And it's literally the whole room, the whole front is like glass. So it's like a glass uh, door. Mm-hmm. Well, glass walls. And you could see the pool directly that was in front. So the pool, I think it was ty- kind of like an infinity pool where the water would just kind of flow over. It wasn't yeah. like a normal like pool. I remember I spent a lot of time in that pool. Like, every night I was swimming there for like three hours because like, it was, I love that pool so much. <laughs> That's that whole, <laughs> it was really nice and I also liked how the rooms were air conditioned very nice um but it was so pretty like the whole when you like literally when you walked in it just felt like you were being pampered the whole time yeah like you have moments you you're like still within nature in the bit because they still have like trees and stuff inside the villa yeah but you still have those individual rooms that make you feel like you're like in a hotel. Like so it was it a very completely weird. Completely splits into three separate rooms. Yeah. But your room had the big, uh, big rainfall shower, like two heads, I think, in the rainfall yeah, shower. Yeah, it was like yeah, it was really nice. Yeah, and then yours had the window that looks right out into the ocean, and the pool was at the edge of the villa, so it was mm-hmm. ocean view as well. And the, it, was it was so a nice. really, it was a really nice. Villa, it to was. be fair. And coincidentally, that that brand is where I'm working now. I work for that hotel brand oh, now. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Which I thought it was quite quite interesting. So, <clears throat> But yeah, it was a really nice place. Yeah, and then the wedding. So what I wanted to say yeah. was Sophia told me that maybe two days before the wedding that she wanted me to say a speech at the wedding. So I was spending my nights there crafting my speech on my phone because I was not prepared. At first, you didn't want to. Yeah. But But then you asked me and and I was like, I can't say no because I know like not not anyone else in Sophia's immediate family can speak English well enough to do a speech. So I was like, okay, I really don't want to. I hate public speaking, but I'm going to have to do it. And also, if you didn't speak at my wedding, you would have regretted it later, I think. Yeah. So I was like, okay, fine. I'm just going to suck it up and let my shaky, shaky hand do whatever. But I'm going <laughs> to do the speech. Yeah. So the wedding, we should say the chapel was in a glass. It was in a glass square, like a box. Yeah. That was overlooking a cliff into the ocean at sunset. Yeah, yeah. And then we should also talk about the fact that you said to everyone in the bride's room when we're getting ready, no one cry, okay? This is like a good day. It's a good <laughs> wedding. And the moment- I was very confident. I was like, no one cries. We're going to like ruin everything. Don't cry. Yeah. She was like so adamant to my mom. Like, don't cry, okay? Like, don't cry. And then the moment we all sat in the chapel and like the bride's entrance song came like I was the first one to in, cry. Sally was the first one bawling. I don't know why what came over me. I I I seriously just thinking about it now makes me like teary eyed. <laughs> but like just just seeing her walk down, I literally I broke down and because I started crying, everyone started crying. That's the thing. Yes, the one girl that was telling everyone, Don't cry, don't cry, don't cry so confidently was the first one that was crying and from behind me when I was like when me and Harley were looking at the priest all I could hear was sniffles in the back like like sucking up people's <laughs> nose it's not like that's all I heard for, like the entire hour we were there yeah I I was I thought I was confident my confidence just went through 50 meters down the floor it's a good thing they took a pictures like a little bit after the wedding because you guys you guys eyes were so red and ha- like half of your makeup was gone like by the time the wedding was over yeah i think once uh because i think i was just most emotional when you walked in i think once the ceremony kind of slowly was nearing end yeah. it was getting okay so my wedding was super quick and super fast we just had like less than three months to plan everything and then by the time it was still really nice 
it was still really nice. The wedding planner that we worked with, she did such a good job. And she was quite yeah. savvy and really smart and quick. So, like, yeah. she's like, oh, we were going to go with, like, this, this, this thing. But then because you guys paid this amount and not that many people showed up. So, we just, uh, so I asked them to, like, do, like, a catering. She just, like, moved the budgets around. Yeah, she yeah. moved the budgets around really freely on the day of the wedding. Like, day and day yeah. before. And then, like, me and Harley were, like, so grateful because she did, like, such a good job. And so one funny thing I always like to mention about this wedding is during the speech, oh right? Oh, my God. So I'm scared. Like, I'm already crying when I'm, like, getting prepared to say the speech again. Like, I just got my tears back. And they're, like, coming back out now. got hydrated enough um, to cry again. <laughs> but, but I was so nervous. But I had my speech on my phone, right? I was reading off my phone, you know, trying not to cry, blah, blah, blah. And my, I told myself, my speech is going to be under a minute because I hate long speeches. Yeah. And I was like, okay, fine. And then Sophia's friend, who voluntarily apparently said he would give a speech first, he wrote his speech out on a piece of paper, fine, he was so confident, but his hands said otherwise. Like, his voice was completely confident, but his hands were so shaky. You could hear the paper, like, shake in his hand. Like, everyone heard the paper, like, flap, 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 flap around. And I thought it was the funniest thing. We, we love him. Me and Harley, we love him. That's all good. It's okay. He tried his best. I think he got the notice quite late notice, too, about the speech. Well, everything about our, everything about our wedding everything was, was last late minute. notice. So we can't, yeah. we can't give early notice for the wedding. But to be really fair, during like the wedding reception dinner, I yeah. really don't know what I ate or how I ate. No, I think you were you were so busy of making sure everything was like going okay. Yeah. Cause I remember I really enjoyed the food and the cake. But you don't even remember eating it. Did a you cake. have the steak or the tuna? I had the steak. Did anyone get the tuna at your table or no? I think people were scared to get the tuna. And my cake? I put in the order like 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 two weeks before the wedding. By the way, the cake. Yeah, and I had chosen. I chose the design the the same day I ordered the cake. It was really good. It's like so. What you don't know is I hate fondant on cake, which I knew when I made made the order. Yeah, so Sophia got like a naked cake where it's just like a light crumb coat of frosting, but there's no fondant on it, which was really good. Which, because my my side of the family, they don't really eat sweet, sweet stuff. So that's what I went yeah. for. And I felt like it was rustic and it kind of fit in with the vibe. I really liked it. And we did not do a first dance. Because, yeah, uh, because I don't dance Harley either. didn't want to. I wouldn't want to. Yeah, so that's why we just loved it. Because the wedding planner was like, what song do you want for your first dance? And then Harley's like, oh, we're not doing one. She was like, oh, okay. <laughs> But then I think we should talk about the taxi as well. So what happened oh, yeah. was the taxi company took the times wrong and they came at 9 o'clock in the morning instead of 9 p.m. at night. So at they were yeah. late when they came in the evening. They came like 9.30. And I don't know if you remember, yeah. the taxi like flew down the hill to the airport. It, it If it had wings, it could have flown us back to Korea. Yeah, because... Our butts were not on the seat. They were hovering through the entire <laughs> no, car ride. I was so scared. Because we were all in that taxi, me included. And then Harley and yeah. Ariel were driving his car back and to they follow really us. Up and to then the they taxi. were like, we could not see you the whole way down. You were just gone. Because I had unloaded everyone yeah. at the airport and I got them ushered into the airport. And by the time they were almost going in is when Harley and Ariel arrived. He's like, yeah. your taxi like driver the flew. And like, to be really honest, that day when you guys all walked in, I was crying so loud. Harley was like so worried. Uh, but then the yeah. thing is, after that date, until now, yeah. I haven't seen anyone in person. I, yeah. Yeah, because after that date, I had went to Jakarta, and we stayed with Harley's parents for a bit before we went to New Zealand. And then ever since I've been in New Zealand... Yeah, you're getting all the had, documents ready and stuff. Yeah, and I haven't had time to go back to Korea. And then we were supposed to go back this year or next year, and then COVID hit, but so COVID. now we're not going back. Yeah. So since my yeah. wedding, so my wedding anniversary was three years this year, Yeah. I haven't seen anyone from my family since. 
Yeah, I haven't seen anyone in the past two and a half years, too. So yeah, poor me and poor you. Yeah, so that was actually the last time I saw Sophia. Because I saw other family, like, the year after that. Yeah. But the last time I saw you was uh, at your wedding. Yeah, so if we didn't have that wedding then, we wouldn't have seen each other at all until now. Yeah. Yeah. But see. And because the last time uh, I saw Sophia before that was... When I was in first year. Yeah, in when college. you, well, yeah, in university, when we went to see yeah, you. Yeah, so a, it would have been six years ago now. Yeah. So. Yeah, because of COVID, I can't even go back anymore. But then, end on a happy note, that's my wedding story, my fast, crazy paced wedding story. I don't know how my yes. wedding planner did everything. In life. But, anyways, that's my love story. I hope you enjoyed part two. This episode was longer than I anticipated. Um, but okay. we wanted you to get the full story. We didn't want to split it into a part three. Yeah. But thanks everyone for listening so much. And if you guys saw our Instagram, you probably saw that we got over 100 downloads for our podcast now. Just want to say yes, thanks I everyone saw. for so much love and support for our podcast just um please follow us on instagram at mixing cultures podcast for any updates about our podcast and little snippets for the next episode and we are on spotify and apple Podcasts as well yep so uh make sure you stay you keep in touch for the next episode after this and i hope everyone has a wonderful start to your day or the end of your day or middle of your day start to the week all right bye bye bye